Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and uh, welcome to a video with a very glossy screen. <laughs> this is my uh, Dell XPS uh, M1210. This is, for the last uh, few years, been one of my main uh, go-to uh, computers for Windows XP, especially when I need XP on a laptop. But today we're not going to be running Windows XP on here. You see, I took its uh, SSD out and have temporarily replaced it with a 500 gig hard drive. And we're going to do something very controversial with this. And I'm not even sure if I agree with doing this or not. We are going to install Windows Vista. Yes, that's right, Windows Vista. And this will actually be the uh, first time that I've used Windows Vista since, I believe, 2009. That was when I upgraded my main computer at the time to uh, Windows 7. I got Windows 7 for my uh, 20th birthday. Not long after um, 7 came out and because Windows 7 was just so much like Vista, but so much better at the same time, uh, I just completely abandoned Vista and used exclu exclusively Windows 7. And, uh, but we're not here to talk about Windows 7. <sighs> Main reason I wanted to do this video is because, um, you know, a lot of people are getting nostalgic for Windows Vista, which I find uh, very, very uh, bizarre, and uh, it actually makes me feel a bit older than I should be, because Windows Vista came out in at the uh, very beginning of 2007, which um, does not seem that long ago to me, but we've got to face reality here, folks. That was 16 years ago now. That, that is a long time ago, even though it doesn't seem like it to me. But we are going to be installing Vista on here, and I'm going to be experiencing it for the first time in, uh, I guess, uh, I want to say over uh, 13 years, probably. Because it's March of 23, and I got rid of it in November of 09. So... Let's go ahead and turn this laptop on. I think the hard drive is cleared out. One thing I did forget to do is uh, set the date and time on this laptop because battery doesn't work and the CMOS battery doesn't work either. So we've got to go ahead and do that. I'll do that off camera. Okay, got date and time uh, set up temporarily because once I... Unplug this from uh, wall power. We're uh, going to lose it again. It was thinking it was December of 2006. And that is, uh, as you can imagine, highly incorrect. <laughs> so, uh, we got a blinking cursor. <laughs> This is inter this is actually more entertaining than most of what's on television these days. Okay, uh, Control Alt deleted it. I have a few. Uh, issues with the uh, DVD drive. Um, for the most part, it still works, but when it starts up, it makes that horrible grinding sound. <laughs> but I do have uh, the Windows Vista installer on my uh, easy-to-boot flash drive. They recently updated it with that nice little DOS-looking splash screen. <laughs> okay, Windows install. And we're going to do the 64-bit uh, version of Windows Vista, which um, I first used at the beginning of 09 after I built my uh, first computer, 
Well, by that I mean uh, first computer that I ever actually built. So we don't want to do a repair. I think we'll do number three. Oh yes, the very plain and generic looking uh, Windows Vista splash screen. Oh yeah, I remember that wallpaper. Okay, I, I don't know if that's normal or not. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Again, I'm not the most patient person in the world. <laughs> now, one thing I forgot to mention about um, this particular laptop is that this was built at the tail end of 2006. And I want you to notice a uh, very peculiar sticker. This has that infamous uh, Design for Windows XP, Windows Vista Capable sticker, which uh, got Microsoft in a little bit of hot water. Um, you can look up further information on that. I don't want to give out false information, but in many ways, uh, this sticker was a little bit of a lie, especially on a lot of computers at the time that were just very, very barely Vista Capable, if at all. So, yeah. Uh, this was not something to believe. But this one, I would say uh, this laptop right here would be a good candidate for Windows Vista at the time. Um, this originally had a Core Duo processor in it, but the uh, person that owned this laptop before me uh, upgraded it to a Core 2 Duo, clocked at 2 gigahertz, and I believe it has 4 gigs of RAM with a uh, NVIDIA uh, video card of some kind. I can't remember the exact model number, but this um, laptop um, should run Windows Vista like a dream. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, get it going. We'll skip the product key because I don't have one. This is just a uh, temporary install anyway. Um, the only two versions of Vista I've actually... <laughs> ever used um, was Windows Vista Home Premium. That's the one I, I used the most. Um, that's what I had on the computers I did run Vista on at the time. And I did use Windows Vista Home Basic on a uh, friend's laptop at one point. Her laptop only had 512 megs of RAM. You can imagine how well that ran. Just uh, a little sarcasm there, but because I'm feeling ambitious, and since I've never used this version of Vista before, we are going to give Windows Vista Ultimate a try and see how that goes. Hmm, this uh, disk was set to uh, GPT, it looks like. Because this did come out of a... Uh, newer computer, this hard drive. So I need to look up. I, I've done it before. i got to switch this over to MBR mode. I've got to figure out how to do that. It's been a while, so one moment. Okay, I believe all we have to do is type this in, convert MBR. Okay, the disk you specified is not GPT formatted. Please select an empty GPT disk to convert. Maybe we didn't have to do that. Maybe we just need to make a partition. Why I didn't do this before, I don't know. Again, the, this is not a how-to video. Okay, this computer's hardware may not support booting to this disk. Ensure that the disk controller is enabled in the computer's BIOS menu. That's an odd message, but... Windows is unable to find a system volume that meets its criteria for installation. What are you talking about? Well, 
Wow. Uh, <laughs> let me look into this. Okay, so apparently all it needed to do was just be rebooted, and it seems to be working now. So, uh, yeah, lesson learned. Don't look too far into these things. So, um, we'll just let it sit here and rot for a little bit while it expands the files. This is usually the slow part. So, we will uh, catch it on the other side. Okay, I was asleep at the wheel there, but we have now rebooted. And it should resume with the rest of the setup. Well, this phone is not liking to, is not wanting to focus on this screen. There we go. Please wait a moment while Windows prepares to start for the first time. Uh, I like the Windows 95 one better. <laughs> Like, I vaguely remember this screen. Um, there's no telling how long it'll take, because it's been so long since I've done this. Okay, back to the screen and completing installation. And occasionally, if it has a built-in, it may even pick up our video driver at this point. Alright, it did pick up the video driver. We have full resolution. So hopefully it won't be much longer now. I see the light on my mouse flickering, so it must be doing something. <sighs> Pretty soon, we will be headfirst into Windows Vista. Okay, I think we're done with uh, setup. We've had enough reboots, <laughs> so it should be a sign that we're... Uh, Nearing the end of the road here. Yeah, I saw the resolution switch there. Okay, here's the uh, Vista out of box experience. And we'll go ahead and put in my name. Uh, I like the dog. <laughs> Okay, what should we call the PC? We'll just call it Vista. Oh no. <laughs> nah, I remember I used to always go with this uh, default background um, to start off with before I would switch over to the uh, Carolina Circle Mall wallpaper that I always use even to this day. We'll skip the uh, Windows updates. We're in the Eastern Time Zone, and I believe, if I remember correctly, this part is going to uh, get our uh, Windows Experience Index score, which I always thought was kind of a stupid place to uh, do this, because uh, this is before we install uh, all the necessary drivers to get it going. I mean, it has the video driver, but... There's probably other drivers on here that's not installed yet. So I always felt like doing this was a waste of time, but hey, at least we get to look at these pretty little, little billboards. They'll sleep the wheel again, so we missed the uh, Vista startup sound, so uh, apparently it does have the sound driver. So, so far we already know we've got a uh, video driver and a sound driver. And here we are. Well, it's been so long since I've seen this. And looks like Aero is enabled. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember this Welcome Center quite well. Let's uh, check and see what drivers we have and don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missing some base system devices. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the drivers using Snappy Driver, and I will uh, see you after that. Well, that took a bit longer than expected. I uh, plugged a uh, flash drive up with Snappy Driver on it, and it was not locking my flash drive. Um, 
all I could say was that it, the version of Windows Vista we installed was uh, the original RTM release from 2006. And so what I did was I hooked up to my network and grabbed uh, Service Packs 1 and 2 and installed both of them, which took forever. I forgot how long it takes to install Service Packs on <laughs> Windows Vista, but I got those installed. And after that, I was able to plug my flash drive in and it worked just fine. Got all the drivers installed and here we are. And that's uh, another thing I want to mention. The original version of the RTM version of Windows Vista was not very good. <laughs> it was very, very buggy. And I know that from experience because I got a computer with Windows Vista like a month after it was released to the public, and it it was a nightmare. And I will uh, delve into that a little bit later um, because that is a interesting story I would like to share with you guys. But let's go ahead and experience Windows Vista. So first thing we see right here that I used quite a bit back in the day was um, the uh, Windows sidebar, and I, I thought this was a a great idea. Um, I will admit, though, um, for a time I did use the Google uh, sidebar from Google Desktop, and uh, just because that had a, a lot more features than this, not that, not that there was anything wrong with this one, but I just preferred the Google sidebar. And typically when I would have the Windows sidebar up, I would change the clock to uh, this design, if I can get to it the uh, kind of retro 50s looking clock. <laughs> Never used this. This was the RSS feed. Um, I don't think that still works. <laughs> and I did use the photo gallery a lot. I used to have it set to my Carolina Circle Mall folder to show pictures of the mall on a slideshow. But yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, but uh, the interesting thing about Windows Vista, and I actually really um, appreciated it for this, um, was that it came with a lot of built-in uh, applications that you just don't see in uh, Windows anymore. Such as, uh, well, first you get your Windows Movie Maker. This was uh, obviously in uh, Windows XP. I actually like the uh, Windows XP version of this better. It seemed to have a little bit more features to it. Of course, this one, I believe, I think could do HD video. This is version 6.0. And one thing that always kind of annoyed me about Windows Vista, you see, um, when you don't have a window maximized, you get the uh, typical arrow, uh, Windows arrow effect. Looks very nice, but when you maximize it, you lose the transparency and get this static uh, color. And I didn't really uh, care for that. Um, I mean, it looked, it didn't look, doesn't look bad or anything, but I just thought it would have been nice to have uh, still had the uh, transparency even when you maximize a window. That's something that Windows 7 uh, did fix, and I was really happy about that. Other apps we get, yeah, you can see the uh, Internet Explorer feed store is unavailable. That doesn't surprise me at all. Let's see, uh, what else do we have here? We get a uh, calendar, which uh, Windows didn't have a built-in calendar like this uh, since Windows 3.1, I believe. And it never had it since. And I think I remember using... Uh, the Vista calendar a few times. I put in different events and appointments and all that good stuff. Uh, even get a some contacts. I think Windows 7 still had this feature. Kind of reminds me of the card file uh, app from uh, Windows 3.1. What else do we have here? Uh, we get a... Oh, yes. Now this... 
was worth the price of admission for me for Windows Vista. Windows DVD Maker. On XP, I didn't really have a uh, good way of recording DVDs. And so when I came across uh, the Windows DVD Maker and Windows Vista, I was just uh, floored by it. You just uh, add videos. We'll just add these three right here. And uh, choose your uh, menu style. Of course, you can customize the menu too and uh, burn it. So, uh, yeah, this was a, a program that I got a lot of hours out of, especially the version for uh, Windows 7, because uh, by that time I had begun doing uh, video trading with uh, people online. And so having a, a good uh, DVD uh, recording software was very necessary for me. But then uh, eventually I discovered a program called DVD Styler, which is a, a free program that does a lot more than Windows DVD Maker, and that's what I've used ever since when I uh, record a DVD, which... Um, for DVD video, I don't do as much anymore because I have a uh, Plex server now. But if I ever, on the rare occasion these days when I do get to do a video trade, I do still use uh, DVDs. Okay, what else do we have here? We get Windows Mail, which I never use, but this was kind of the... Uh, Replacement for uh, Outlook Express. Oh, welcome to Windows Mail. Yep, even says right here, Windows Mail is the successor to Outlook Express. So yeah, Windows Vista, um, I have to commend on having uh, all these uh, excellent little programs that came bundled with it that uh, just were not included on uh, Windows 7. I think out of the ones I've shown so far, the only one that made it to Windows 7 was, thank goodness, uh, Windows DVD Maker. And we get the Windows Photo Gallery. You can organize your photos and edit them. I remember upgrading that to the Windows Live uh, photo program. I don't forget the exact name it was, but had a few more features that I liked having. Another uh, interesting thing about Windows Vista, may have been in Windows 7, I can't remember, is the uh, games folder. If you um, installed the, com the compatible, a compatible game, it would show up in uh, this game folder and of course right right here we just get the uh, basic Windows program uh, like Minesweeper never been good at that game <laughs> and the cult classic Purple Place yay Purple Place also available on Windows 7. And you get your uh, a program to download Windows Live Messenger with, which I never used. Um, I never used uh, any of the Windows messaging features because I did not know anyone back then that used Windows Messenger. Everyone, everyone in my uh, friend groups uh, used uh, AOL Instant Messenger, so that's what I used, along with Yahoo Messenger. Uh, I knew a few people who used that as well. Oh, what else do we have here? Uh, of course, we got Windows Media Center. The uh, Windows Vista Edition. Set up later. Never really used the Vista version a whole lot. I mostly 
just used uh, the Windows XP version and the uh, Windows 7 version. And we get this nice little uh, personalization uh, program. Screen savers were still kind of a thing back then. Now this is one that I remember quite well, the bubble uh, screen saver, because I remember going into stores at Soul Computers back then uh, during the Vista and Seven Days like Best Buy and Circuit City, and for some reason all the computers would have this uh, screensaver set up on it the, with the bubbles going around. So, yeah, I uh, remember this one quite well. <laughs> Never used it personally, but I just remember it because it was shown in all the stores. Okay, uh... Let's see if we can get on the internet here. I do have an Ethernet cable plugged up to this laptop. We'll use the 64-bit version of IE7, I believe, which I, I don't think is going to work anymore. But um, let's see if I can install the uh, uh, a browser that will work. Uh, we can try MyPal. That's what I use on uh, Windows uh, XP. Ask me later. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it likes uh, modern websites, so, uh, I think I do have a, uh, program, uh, I, I, I do have it on the uh, network, so let me, uh, map that. Okay, just installed MyPal, um, this should let us access more modern uh, web pages. Now with uh, Windows Vista being out of support for the last six years, I believe, I highly recommend not browsing the web on Vista. I'm just doing this because I'm a, a maniac. <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, watch a YouTube video. I remember uh, using, uh, watching quite a bit of YouTube on Windows Vista. Of course, YouTube back then was a much different beast. Back when it still said, broadcast yourself. <laughs> a little bit sluggish. I don't know if that's because of Vista or uh, the computer itself being a little bit underpowered. Let's look up my uh, channel, and we'll play my latest uh, video about the Gateway 2486. We'll screen it. I'm going to be looking at this uh, computer that I just literally unboxed a few minutes ago. I've had several. Let's skip ahead to where there's more motion. It's a 1280 by 800 display, by the way. And it's running pretty smoothly. Let's see if I remember how this uh, goes in. And I'm seeing a few drop frames there. Oh, it's actually playing at a uh, 720p. More than I thought it would be doing. So yeah, you can still watch YouTube videos on uh, Windows Vista, but again, I do not recommend doing that. <laughs> now, one thing I want to try is something I've never used on Windows Vista before because I've never used... Uh, Vista Ultimate, and that's the uh, Ultimate Extras, which I think you may have to download them, to be honest with you. And I don't think we can really do that. I think uh, the update servers for Vista are uh, pretty much dead. Yeah, um, but I think I know a way around this. One moment. 
Learned about this in a uh, Michael MJD video recently. This is something called Legacy Update, which, uh, in fact, there's this video right there, um, which uh, gives access back to uh, Windows Update on older versions of uh, Windows, such as uh, 2000 XP and Vista. And so we'll go ahead and install it. And hopefully this will uh, allow us to get those uh, Vista Ultimate Extras. Oh yeah, user account control. Um, this was very controversial with Windows Vista. A lot of people did not like it. It didn't bother me a whole lot. Um, sometimes I'd turn it off if I was in a bad mood that day, but um, it wasn't the worst thing I think about that Vista had. Okay, and we'll go ahead and install that. I just got to install some updates first. See, so yeah, it's uh, https colon slash slash uh, legacyupdate.net. If you guys want to give this a try. Okay, I got legacy update installed. It took a while to find all the uh, updates. I'm going to skip the regular updates for now, mainly because this is just a temporary install. And we're going to go straight to the ultimate extras. Maybe I'll finally get to experience these after all these years. First, we got the ultimate extra sounds from Microsoft Tinker. And Microsoft Tinker itself... Uh, Install this Ultimate Extra to play Microsoft Tinker from the Games folder. Not sure, I can't remember what Microsoft Tinker is. Sound schemes, uh, you'll be able to switch from Windows Default to Ultimate Extra Glass or Ultimate Extra's Pearl in the sound settings. Ooh. Oh, and Windows Dream Scene, yes. Uh, this, I believe, lets you use a video file as your wallpaper which we're definitely going to have to try. Of course, it requires a graphics card that supports Windows Arrow, Hold'em Poker Game, which I don't play any. I'm not really into poker or any kind of card games. I don't even know how to play Solitaire. <laughs> and we'll skip BitLocker. And we'll go ahead and install them. Alrighty, we'll let it do its thing. Hopefully it'll work. Okay, I believe the Ultimate Extras are now installed. I'm not sure where they uh, installed to. Let's see what Microsoft Tinker is. Here's one of the Extras. Okay, we got a robot. I remember I've never used these before. The highest level of Vista I ever used was Home Premium. Okay. I have no clue what this game is. Hey, do I use a keyboard? Error keys will move the robot and push movable blocks. Complete a level, move the robot to the rotating. Okay, apparently we're supposed to get to that little spinny thing. Controls are a little bit awkward. Okay, I guess we did something right. <laughs> That's a pretty 
pretty interesting game. It reminds me of another game, but I can't think of what it is, though. A button elevator will raise a robot up a level. Controls are, again, a little bit awkward. Right, that's uh that's Tinker. <laughs> Not a bad little game, I I must say. Good little puzzle, uh good little, good little puzzle game there. Okay, uh there was some other stuff. Oh, we had the uh the sounds. Always gotta do the classic view. Okay, ultimate extra it's glass. Let's see what this sounds like. Here's asterisk. Sounds a little bit different. Wow, fancy shutdown sound. Even user account control sounds different. <laughs> Let's see what Pearl is. Well, that one sounded uh, a bit like the Windows XP uh, error sound. Okay, that was interesting. Uh, so those are sounds I've uh, never heard before. Try to remember where the other uh, ultimate extras might be. Hmm. I know one thing I do want to try though is a uh, dream scene. I guess we can do it through desktop background. Okay, dream scene content. Let's see what this does. Not sure what video this is. This is some kind of MPEG. Oh, it's the same background, but look, the uh, lines and the glare is kind of moving. Interesting. Hmm. I like that. Okay, I copied a uh, video over to the laptop. It's basically an uh, animated version of my uh, YouTube logo. So let's see if this will work. Oh, what do you know? <laughs> This is compl this is a complete novelty. It's completely unnecessary, but I like it. <laughs> I actually like it. A <laughs> little bit squish, probably because of the screen resolution, and I'm sure this uh, does not do any favors to the system performance. In fact, I want to check and see what that is out of curiosity. It is really using that CPU. Now, if I switch back to a regular wallpaper, will the CPU usage go down? Yeah, 
There we go. <laughs> yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> Just like I thought it was kind of a bit of a resource hog. Although it's still using quite a bit of CPU. Um, again, in my experience, uh, Windows Vista did use quite a bit of horsepower. Which uh, leads me to my story about the very first time I ever used Windows Vista. First computer, that is, that I've ever had Vista on. I was super excited about the release of Windows Vista throughout uh, January of 07. I was getting into the hype. Um, I, I got that uh, brochure that said the WoW starts now. Uh, read up all about Windows Vista and all the features it was going to have. I was so excited. I was so excited about it. And uh, I was able to save up some money. I, I was 17 at the time. Uh, it took a little while, but by February, I did earn a, enough money, and I was able to, to buy a, a decent computer. A, a desktop computer, because at the time, my main desktop was the Dell Dimension 2350. And I went on to Dell's website and ordered myself a Dell Dimension E520. Specs of it... I, I I remember it being a Intel Pentium D. I forget what the clock speed was. It had one gig of RAM and a 160 gigabyte hard drive, which was an unreal size for for me at the time. The uh, largest hard drive I had was an 80 gig on my uh, Inspiron 6000 laptop. But the reason I bought a new computer. Neither of the two main computers I had at the time, the Dell Dimension 2350 and the Inspiron 6000, could uh, comfortably run Windows Vista, if at all. Um, I know uh, both of them, uh, both computers, did not have uh, compatible video cards for Windows Aero, which uh, also coincidentally meant that Windows DVD Maker would not work. I can't believe... Uh, Windows DVD requ Maker required that high a spec uh, video card, but oh well. Um, so, ordered the Dell Dimension E520, and I got it at, toward the end of February of 2007. And I remember uh, at the time, I was extremely sick. I had come down with some kind of virus, and it was awful. Um, I don't want to go into details, it's a little bit gross, but I, it's the sickest I've ever been, even to this date. And I hope I don't ever have to go through that again, but um, that was when I got the Dimension E520. It had, I hooked it up, it had a Windows Vista Home Premium. First day I used it, I just played around for a little bit because I couldn't do a whole lot with it because I was sick. And it was impressive, I really liked it. But then, um, after I uh, healed up and started feeling better, I started using the computer uh, for more heavy-duty tasks. And then I started to realize I'd gotten myself into some trouble. You see, when I spec that system out, I spec'd it with one gig of RAM, a Pentium D processor, and a uh, discrete NVIDIA graphics card. All three of those to me at the time seemed outrageously high end. Remember, I was coming from the uh, Dell Dimension 2350 with its 2002-2003 uh, era Pentium 4 and 256 megs of RAM and uh, onboard Intel video. But I was thinking of this in terms of Windows XP, which was my daily driver OS for many years at that point. And so I would assume that, just like with XP, one gig of RAM, Pentium D, discrete NVIDIA video card, this will be the most powerful, most powerhouse computer I ever had with, with the newest version of Windows on top of it. Oh, was it a train wreck. It didn't help that, of course, Dell uh, bundled it with all kinds of uh, garbage uh, bloatware, as they did at the time, but 
it ran so slow, unbearably slow, uh, to the point where it was almost unusable. Now, if that computer had Windows XP, I'm sure it would have been a dream come true. I'm sure it would have ran beautifully, but with Vista, it ran like a dog. No offense to my dog in there. Um, it was awful, and not and not only that, but I was having uh, some pretty bad compatibility issues uh, with stuff that worked great on Windows XP, but on Windows Windows Vista, it wouldn't work at all. I don't remember exactly uh, all the stuff that didn't run right on it. Um, it was several things, but the one I do remember in particular was I had a video capture card at the time. It was a USB uh, capture card from Dazzle um, slash Pinnacle Studios. And um, that's what I used to uh, capture VHS footage at the time. It wasn't the best quality, but it did the job um, just fine for the time it I had it in the mid-2000s, but when I would hook it up to my Dimension E520 with Windows Vista, every time I'd plug it in, I'd get a blue screen of death. And so, and that was something, a device that I use quite frequently. And so that was kind of a deal breaker. Um, so in order to capture video, I'd have to lug out my uh, Inspiron 6000, which was still running Windows XP, and uh, hook my VCR up to it or my cab cable box and transfer stuff off my DVR. But it was, uh, yeah, it was not a pleasant experience at all. Um, I didn't even have a uh, Windows Vista Restore CD for it. For some reason, Dell didn't uh, send it to me. All they sent to me was the Windows Vista Anytime Upgrade DVD, which didn't have the right license with it. I had to call tech support and get the DVD to uh, do a uh, Windows in reinstall on it. And I did that, and that wiped out all the OEM bloatware, which admittedly, it did help it a little bit, but it still ran like garbage. And I had given my uh, dad my Dimension 2350 because I didn't need it anymore. I had this brand new powerhouse computer, which wound up not being much of a powerhouse. And so I traded my dad the E520 for my Dimension 2350 back. And not long after that, I upgraded the memory to it, in it to a gig of RAM. Ran like a dream. Of course, I was using XP at the time, but the... The 2350 lasted me a couple more years as my main desktop and ran beautifully. No trouble at all with it. And so because of that, I was very, very soured from Windows Vista for a long time. When it came time for me to get a new laptop in uh, January of 2008, I uh, spec'd out a Dell Vostro 1500 laptop, and I went with that because uh, that was one of the few computers that Dell offered at the time that you could still have Windows XP installed on. And so I got it with Windows XP Professional, ran beautifully. It was a uh, Core 2 Duo laptop, um, I think the same chip that's in this one, and uh, I think 2 gigs of RAM. And obviously, Windows XP ran, oh, it ran beautifully on it. I'd never experienced anything like that before. And it even had a 160 gig hard drive like the E520 had. And eventually, later that year, I started uh, reconsidering Vista. And so I dual booted uh, XP and Vista on the uh, Vostro 1500. And Vista, much to my surprise, ran pretty okay on it. Um, I was very impressed with it. And then uh, at the very end of the year, I built my first uh, custom-built computer with a uh, high-end uh, Core 2 Duo with 4 gigs of RAM uh, and some kind of NVIDIA video card that was built into the motherboard. And I installed Windows Vista on it. And 
for the first uh, 11 months of t the year 2009, I ran Vista on there as my daily driver. And Vista ran beautifully on it. It ran so well. I was so impressed with it. I finally had a computer that actually uh, made using Windows Vista a good experience. Of course, the Vostro 1500 ran it well too, but this one ran it even better. And uh, it was only for the fact that Windows uh, 7 came out that year that I abandoned Vista and upgraded to Windows 7 because it was so similar to Vista, but so much better in every way. And I just fell in love with Windows 7. To this day, it's still one of the best uh, versions of Windows I've ever used. Um, I mean, I still don't mind using Windows 10 or Windows 11, but... Windows 7 was a really good one, along with uh, XP. Those are the two modern-ish versions of Windows that have always been my favorites, XP and 7. But, yeah, that's my, uh, that's my uh, Windows Vista story. At least it did eventually have a happy ending. But, um, yeah, it was interesting using Windows Vista again uh, on this computer for the first time since 2009 when I switched over to Windows 7 and it and as for this laptop it runs it runs okay on here it's uh, it does get a little bit sluggish as we saw with the uh, CPU um, despite this being a core 2 duo but I am going to put my SSD back in here um, and start using XP on here again because that's what I got this laptop for was for running Windows XP. So yeah, it was nice uh, going back and uh, seeing uh, Windows Vista again after uh, its release 16 years ago. And one, and I forgot to mention one thing that did help Windows Vista was uh, the service packs are released. Especially once they got to Service Pack 2, it ran pretty well. Especially on the custom-built desktop I had at the time. And... Also, here's our uh, official Windows Experience Index. We've only got a 2.0, uh, thanks to the uh, video card. I remember uh, the average score I usually get was a uh, like a 3.2, I think. That was on my Vostro 1500. And then my uh, 2008 custom built, it, it got a much higher score. And of course, that, th that carried over to Windows 7 as well. Those scores never really meant anything to me, really, but it was just still fun to see. So, I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this video. So, we'll go ahead and uh, shut her down. And until next time, this is Billy Core. Signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You may also support me on Patreon if you would like. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.